first and foremost, welcome to Hume City FC, our first digital meeting with the GAF. Hegs, Hegs, how you been? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Just uh, keeping busy. Yeah, keeping indoors. All right, well, uh, a few questions we're going to fire your way. Um, so just, yeah, feel free to answer as you go. If you're not comfortable with anything, it's completely up to you. Uh, so first question, <laughs> none are controversial, so it's all good. So uh, first question, obviously, uh, being disconnected from your parents and siblings in the UK, how were you personally coping with the lockdown yourself? Um, obviously, the last two months have been difficult for a lot of people. I suppose for for me here, it's kind of normal in terms of how I communicate with my family at the moment. Obviously, we're kind of accustomed to... Yeah. Speaking to my parents um, and relatives and friends in a phone in a on a platform such like this. So for for us and our kind of relationship, it's it's not particularly changed much, okay. which is a, a good thing for us. Um, obviously, we want to know that everybody's safe, and luckily that's been the case. Cool. Um, but I do um, feel for the for the Australians, and we've seen a few as um popping around to the shops or. Um, taking Winnie to childcare, we we see people with grandparents at the end of the streets and people speaking to their family and close yeah. and close friends just from a distance, which is it's difficult. But um, luckily for me, it's been pretty simple. Okay, so th- there's been no struggles that have arisen since the lockdown, especially being a, a you know new parent. Oh no! Again, that's um, an amazing thing. Really, I've spent the last two months daddy daycare so um we've had two months watching uh, every day when his um legs strengthen and they start sprinting around the place which is um okay. is a, a job in itself so yeah right I, i'm um, definitely positives to be taken out of it good. awesome mate um so move it we'll move on to the next one sounds like everything's good on your end so um just more about the team i guess if you communicated with the boys how have they been coping we've got a quite a few players you know with families extending overseas so they're out here on their own um yeah just any yeah but that's it. it's been an interesting one and it's, it's kind of been one of those where we just kind of left it open obviously everybody connects through all group chats and and the players are kind of together on that so we've we've just basically made sure that we've checked in every so often made sure if anybody needed anything um that we'd be there for them as long as they asked them um, awesome. and we just asked them to kind of look after each other whilst they were away so um, again, as far as I know, nothing too crazy has happened and everybody's been in good health. So, um, so yeah, and again, I think Australia has been pretty good in terms of the overall world scene. So it's been a, a positive um, compared to a, what, what it could have been. Yeah, awesome. Um, and I guess just mental health probably being the primary concern. Our last game was March 15th against Benley. Well, that's when the highlights were up. Um, I guess, what were your expectations of the players? Were there any sort of fitness levels they needed to monitor? Was there anything put in place, a training regime? It was a, it was a very interesting one, this, because it's, um, again, normally you go away in the off-season and you might give the um, players um, just something to work on or um, without knowing how long we were going to be away and without knowing what it would look like when we got back, it was a very interesting, interesting scenario. So... Um, again, we just left it to the players, really. The senior group were just given kind of free reign to, to look after himself um, under the condition that as soon as we got back, we were intending to start effectively as we finished. So they had to be in a condition to, to be ready to train at the intensity that we left at. Brilliant. And then to be fair, we, we've, we've, seen, um, we've seen times and we've seen runs posted in our, in our chats and stuff that have, have shown that the players are probably fitter aerobically and, and running fit, running fitness wise fitter than when they left. Um, but then football's a different thing, so yeah. obviously you've got to get back to football movements and stuff like that. So um yeah, really happy with, with that and um again everybody's fit and healthy so that's all the That's the main thing. Awesome. Um probably the main thing is so we were spearheading I guess the return to football across Australia. Um, you know, that's had mixed reviews and, and caught a lot of attention. What was the primary decision? Uh, I guess that's probably something you've liaised with Steve, uh, Steve Kai, the president, obviously. Um, what was the driving factor behind that? Um, I think the, the basic thing, as soon as um, it became possible to start looking at training and playing again, was that we are a football club. 
Um, we were a football club, so whether we're, we have a 10 year old or a 30 year old, we're trying to give that person a platform to play football, which is effectively what our, our job is. It's, it's kind of in the name. So, yeah. um, again, there's obviously this thing at the moment where a 19 year old might be able to play, but a 22 year old is not going to be able to. So, um, that's that is what it is. I mean, I was very proud to be a part of, of a club who wants to play football, regardless of the situation. And um, again, for me as a coach, to be told that I can't coach at my team would have probably been a. I'd have probably seen it as a negative because that's just what I, I love to do. But um, I think that being said, with as coaches, players, fans, after two months of kind of being indoors or isolating or quarantine or whatever you've been through the the ability just to give everybody a, a bit of happiness or something positive yeah. to do to get out there and play some football as as entertainers if at the, at the senior level because effectively that's what we are would have been um or it will be uh, a nice thing to do and um i know um there was some excited faces to be to be out and about last night and yeah uh yes obviously these uh a lot of criteria that we have to follow, but it's um, mm. uh, it was it was really nice to see some smiling faces and some laughing faces and and some people just kind of out there doing exercise. Yeah, really. Yeah, no. But um, I mean, like you said, I think there was that sense of emptiness because you know you train. We we love come. Everyone loves coming to the club. Everyone will hang around. Everyone turns up early, and then probably more importantly, game day. You know the. What do you do now to fill that excitement? It's been nearly two months and it's just not the same. You know, Friday nights, for us, that's always been game day and I'm sure that's the same for all players, especially the form that we started with. So, no, you're spot on there. Um, I guess what was the the feel like just last night being back out there, Um, obviously enforcing COVID rules? Yeah, it was a a weird one, really. Um, It was was great to see the lads. They enjoyed being on the park again. Trying to kind of remember some football movements, but interacting with each other with a bit of a uh, bit of fun, a bit of laughter, um, which which was great. Um, but it had this weird weird feeling about it. Obviously, everybody mm. arriving kind of separately, getting tested as they came into the pitch, um, going onto the pitch uh, one by one, just arriving, getting out of the car onto the pitch, having effectively the team meeting before the session split into two tens either side of the field um, all kind of separated into COVID safe distances which was weird whilst I was setting the session up like you're setting your football session up and then you're also setting cones on the field yeah. to keep people away from each other whilst you're going to speak to them which is um, it, it's something new but we're, something that we might have to kind of get used to and then yeah. obviously then splitting the group entirely for the full session um, and then finishing and then watching them just walk straight out and get in the car, which yeah. is, um, it's a different experience. Um, again, for, for me as a, a coach who likes to kind of be involved in the players and speak to them, it was probably a difficult time to actually have conversations, proper conversations with people, yeah. um, especially after not seeing them for so long. But well, that, that's fine. And um, again, People have told me over the last kind of morning that we've had some images that have gone out that have inspired some uh, keyboard warriors to kind of get about it. But we know that's the, the world we live in and uh, we're pretty comfortable with the criteria that we were uh, we were covering there. Yeah. And we were, I think we went beyond what we actually needed to do. So, again, posting pictures like that, again, is we're on the forefront. Someone has to be first. We're doing things for a positive and we want the positive people to get behind us. And yeah. um, Again, with all this, this is just going to inspire conversations and opinions and ideally positive for everybody who wants to get back into football across all of Australia. But um, again, we all know um, how social media traffic works. So people want to say certain things to, to boost certain channels. But yeah, right. We, we, we love it. We just want to be involved in it. So um, we're just really happy to be back. Well, the funny thing is, I think a few other a club or two apparently uh, returned to training and there's been no documentation of that. So I think that's probably more worrying, at least. You know, we're putting it out there, enforcing well, the rules. So, you know, you, you can't... Yeah, but that, that's it. I think um, 
you can you can train and you can not put anything out there and, and maybe that's probably something that might want to be checked more but um, again I was at the club on the on Tuesday prior we've got signage everywhere we've got entrances to every pitch exits to every pitch we've got a one way system around um, testing for everything um, obviously the, the facility is short over the public toilets and we're doing yeah. our best to kind of meet the criteria and um, with the juniors kind of starting next week it's um, there's a lot of stuff that we have to do and Will we get things wrong, or could we improve on things throughout that uh, throughout the next few weeks? Probably, but um, we're we're happy to put our kind of our brand, our name, ourselves on the line to kind of show that it can be done, and hopefully, yeah. hopefully inspire others to do it. Spot on. Um, I guess it's pretty big this one. What can you see staying from COVID, and what do you think will probably evaporate as time goes on, and you know the vaccines are released and everything's back to somewhat normal. Oh, that's a big question, mate. I know. Now you um, can be Dr. Hegarty for a second. I don't know. Um, I suppose you, you see different things in and around the place and how football will look and how life will look. Um, I'd like to think that there'll be, when you think about what you were doing prior, some of the, the hygiene-based stuff that was around the place probably wasn't ideal. Um, so mm. hopefully bits and uh, both bobs of that protocols of that will stay in yeah. place. Um, I'm, I'm quite interested in this... Um, thermometer gun that we've got the infrared gun that can test people's fevers which um a few uh, sick people in a few years won't like to see prior to games because yeah. it might mean that they don't play <laughs> or they can't get away with feeling all this that's true but, um uh, again it's we'll, we'll see what happens but again who knows yeah. i'm uh, i'm very far down the pecking order for, for decisions and opinions like that well uh, we'll leave that one there then um, so look, some clubs are 50-50. I guess us setting the example uh, and spearheading this, I guess, is there any advice you'd probably like to give? Just any opinions, expressions? Oh, not really, mate. I mean, who, who am I to give advice on that? I think... Um, oh, you're coach of the year, so that them, probably helps. From what I've heard and what you go around, yeah. there's, there's, there's so many new politicians currently involved in all these things, and it's probably a bit of a mess and, and me getting involved in it and I'll tell you my piece or my opinions just going to add to the to the fire and we don't really need that we just need a hopefully a clear head a clear mind just to make some decisions and if people want to follow they follow if they don't they don't and then we move on awesome um, and last but not least I guess moving forward what's the future of MPL look like this is probably a wake up call oh, to everyone. That, well, you, with all the questions tonight, mate, with all the questions, I think um, it's, it's probably a bigger question than that. It's probably a bigger question yeah. because football in we, general, we probably. MPL, yeah. Australian football is a big, a big crossroads. So hopefully something positive will come out of it. Um, I think just for, for Hume City, that's all we can really focus on. And whatever ends up being the decision, we will. We'll deal with it at that stage and figure out the best way to move forward. Um, we've spent the last two and a half years um, and we'll continue to just kind of work into improve the club, connect a seven-year-old to a senior team, create a philosophy, connect um, football behaviours and personal behaviours to hopefully kind of create pathways to, to go to bigger and better things. And um, We're a long way from being perfect. Um, but we're, we're trying to be um, better every day. So um, what it looks like at the top or the bottom will probably be irrelevant until it's made a, the decision's been made and we'll just yeah. act accordingly and, and make the best out of that situation. But um, when we play, who we play, how we play... If we play. We'll play. <laughs> yeah, if right. we play. But, but we'll play. And again, I've, I've got no doubt that... I mean, Hume City are Hume City and... If the league gets cancelled and we're not allowed to play anywhere, I'm sure all the players will continue to play. All the other leagues are going to be playing and you could find some very strong State 1, State 2 teams with all the MPL players going out there and, and playing true. the game that they love. So, um, again, we're looking to keep um, everybody together. It's, it's been a, a a long a long two, two and a half years that, mm. and we probably got to a point where we were in a good place, really happy with our... Um, our progression and, and how we put things together, not only um, 
on the senior front because anything can happen there. But in terms of um, all our junior systems and and the football that we were starting to play and, yeah. and the reasons behind that, so um, that won't change. And hopefully, again, nothing's changed probably in terms of Hume City overall. That we hope that um, the landscape of Australian football changes to allow clubs like ours to progress forward. Um, if we're good enough, we go up, and if we're not good enough, we don't go up. Mm. or go down and, and that's for me how football should be but again I'm just a dad in, in Nidri you know what I mean gotcha mate um, any closing comments to the segment no that's it mate that's all uh, we just want everybody to be happy we want to try and get everybody together and, and everything that we can do to get better and better better faster stronger yeah it's definitely hard filling in the gaps that's for sure you know. Yeah, no. All right, thanks, Hegs, mate. Appreciate it. Go and uh, go and watch. I don't know what what is it. Baby Shark? Is it the Wiggles? What's what's the in thing now for kids? No, we're we're going straight into a bath now. Straight into a bath. Um, you're straight into a bath. About bath time now, and then we'll um, a little baby massage prior to bed. Bit of book, bit of milk. Beautiful. Living the dream, mate. All right, thanks, Hegs. Appreciate it. Have a good one, Tommy. You too. Be safe. Hey, 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 hey,